Good morning, church. Wow, it's good to see you all. We sit in the front. We didn't realize there's so many of you. That's brilliant. Oh, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord. Have you enjoyed, well, not really enjoyed, have you been blessed by the worship this morning? Let's give it up for the worship team, the tech guys. Let's not forget them. <laughs> Wow, it's great to be in the house of the Lord today. Let's just pray before we start. Lord, we thank you that we get this opportunity to sit at your feet right now. Holy Spirit, we know that you are amongst us. And uh, I pray, Lord, that even as um, this word comes forth right now, Lord, that it will be touching our hearts our minds, our lives, because you are always wanting to change us. You are always wanting to make the best of us, the best version of us. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that even, Lord, as we come, we have come in unity, Lord. Even as we've come right now, Lord, we prepare our hearts. I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me, through your word, Lord, to speak to your people, Lord. It'll be a heart to heart, from your heart to our hearts this morning. So Lord, I step aside and allow you to speak through me, Lord. Thank you for your people that have come today and even for those that are online, Lord, that you will just move amongst us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So church, there is so much to celebrate as a church, you know. Over the last two weeks, we've had the birth of two new babies. So we're going to get some photos. This is baby Hepzibah that was born on the 19th of April, and she's doing well. And this is baby to Ruth and Jude Water. And then on the 1st of May, we've had baby Hiram Alvarez, and he was born on the 1st of May this year, obviously, yeah, last two weeks, yeah. Wow, you know, as I've met uh, the parents, but all of them are doing well. It's, it's startling to see how the guys look more tired than the, than the ladies. I mean, how does that work? I do not know. It was the same thing for you, Devesha. Don't talk so, don't laugh so loudly. But it seems to be the guys, you know, they're like, oh, we're tired. Like the ladies are like so excited about the babies. It's been great, you know. And we just praise God for his blessings. And as a church, we continue to pray for Millie. We continue to pray for a miracle. I believe that God is uniting us as a church like never before. And uh, even as I speak to my husband, Devation, all the time, and he says, you know what, we've been praying for jobs for people. We've been praying uh, for new homes for people. So God is doing a new thing amongst us all the time. And we are so grateful for what he, has, he is doing for us. But it's not just that the Lord is uniting us as a church in destiny. I believe that the Lord is uniting the church. He is uniting the churches in Teesside, especially. Now, who was at the Globe? Yeah. yeah, come on. I mean, that was just a snippet of what heaven will be like. But obviously, there'll be millions and millions of people there. And it was so powerful. And, and as we gathered together, there was a sense of unity. It was like finally us together in unity. And this month of May is going to be a month of missions. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, May is a month of missions. Okay, yes, if you accept that mission, that's right. And you're going to be talking to your neighbor a lot, so if you don't like your neighbor, it's a good time to change your seat, okay? Uh, so just so you know. But guys, this is a powerful opportunity for us to come together as a church and, and do what God is calling us to do. And we are in an associate, uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about Festival Tisa because for some of you, you might be like, if you're the first time in the church, by the way, I was just walking down the stairs and I, and I saw a lady and like, I'd, I've not seen her before. So uh, by the way, I'm Tracy, <laughs> for those of you that might not know me, part of the leadership team here. And uh, with Festival Teesside, there's... Um, 
an association called the Louis Palau Association. And this association is a worldwide organization that actually proclaims the good news. They unite the churches together and impact cities worldwide, okay? This is a worldwide organization, association that go all over the world and they are coming to Teesside. Okay, so what does it mean for us? It, it, you know, okay, it sounds, wow, wow, they're all coming, but it, it's all going to take a part of each one of us. We all have our part to play. So from the outset of this, of this message that I'm going to bring today, I want you to start thinking of those that are yet to know Jesus that are in your world. And at the outset, even... The enemies might be telling you, no, don't go there. Do not say your nose for anybody. At the outset, let's start thinking about people in our world. So May is a month of missions. And what is our mission? So it talks about in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. That's your word. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you to the very end of the earth. You see, today, Jesus is calling us to be on a co-mission with him. You see, Jesus' mission was to come onto this earth to seek and save the lost. And Jesus' mission now becomes our mission to go into all the world and seek and save the lost through, through him. So Jesus' mission becomes our mission on this earth. And what a privilege we have to be part of this. What a privilege. And last week, uh, Nadine spoke very powerfully about the Holy Spirit. And can I just encourage you, she did a powerful series. We uh, have our own YouTube channel, so you, you need to go and listen to that and watch it. It was powerful. And the scripture that she brought out was Acts 1 verse 8. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will, what is that power for? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the very ends of the earth. Guys, today the Lord talks and tells us that we have been empowered with the Holy Spirit not to keep for ourselves, but to be His witnesses. And we are all called to be witnesses. And that is why this whole lead up to Festival Teesside, the Lord is calling each one of us to pay our part. Why? Because we are commissioned to become community changers. And I just want to, to dwell on that. Community changes. Now, we need to think of the magnitude and impact that Festival Teesside can have. Now, I think we'd be unaware of the magnitude. And by the way, guys, I don't have the time up there, and I can talk, so just so you're aware, yeah? <laughs> so we do not know the magnitude and the, uh, you know, the impact of Festival Teesside. And I believe that this festival is positioned for us, where it could change all of Teesside. You see, this festival can be impacting over 20,000 people's lives. And for some reason, it seems like the church has been dormant. It's kind of like lying still. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what was God said? Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, I don't know whether you agree with this, but our nation, our land needs healing. I'm a physiotherapist, and every single day I sit with patients, and although they come with physical problems, I can tell you that they are destroyed on the inwards. They've lost their hope. 
They, they, they're going through so much things. And you start to think, how do you cope without Jesus? You know, we have Jesus for ourselves. And the Lord is saying, don't just keep Jesus for yourself. We need to start taking Jesus to the world. And that is what he's called us to do. And we are needing spiritual healing. And F Festival Teesside can become something that potentially can change all of Teesside. It can change the community of Teesside. I've been here 23 years and I have never experienced anything like this. I have never seen the church joining together, arising like it is doing right now, right now. In, 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 and especially in this month of May leading up to June when Festival Teesside will be on the 8th of and 9th of June. And I can just sense that this could be a revival in Teesside where our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren read the history books to say, wow, there's been some change in the nation even through what's going to happen. You know, and I started to think, why, Lord, why? And when you look at the Louis uh, Palau Association, one of their ma ma main aims is to unite the church. And you know what? The Bible talks about that very simply. Where there is unity, he commands his blessing. When there is unity in your marriage, guess what? God commands his blessing. When there is unity in your family, God commands his blessing. When there is unity in your small group, in your connect group, God God commands his blessing. When there is unity in us as a church, God is commanding his blessing. And even through Teesside Church, as the Teesside Churches unite, and it's not about destiny anymore. It's not about the Methodists or the Anglicans or the Baptists or the Catholics. It's about Jesus. It's about spreading Jesus to the world. So it's not about us anymore. And I love that. Because that's what the Lord looks at. He looks for us to unite together. You know, I love that in our Destiny Church. I love to see how people are uniting. You know, I'm, I'm so excited to see. Just yesterday, uh, some of the girls came to me and said, Tracy, how can we help? I've never seen such unity before because God is here, is doing a work in us, and he wants us to unite. And I just pray that we will be positioned and our hearts will be opened to what God is wanting to do amongst us. Church, it is harvest time. It is harvest time. And Luke 10 verse 2 says, he told them, the harvest is plentiful. Do you agree to that? That the harvest is plentiful. You know, it is plentiful. Everybody around us, your neighborhood, your family members. But the workers are few. The Lord is saying, we are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This morning, we are all called to be workers in the field, in the harvest field. And that should be a overflow. And I can just sense somehow right now you're saying you've got nothing to give. I tell you what, you have something. Anybody here can testify of the goodness of God. Put your hands up, yeah? All of you have a testimony. All of you have something that you can take. And this week, I know that you are going to have an opportunity to share your testimony. You are going to get opportunity. It's what do you do with it? What do you do with the fact that you have been empowered with the Holy Spirit? What do you do? Do you keep it for yourself or do you share it with those around you? You know, I started to think of the word win. What is our win? If you consider a football match, right? So say, for example, Middlesbrough is playing Leeds, okay? And when they go to that, on that football pitch, those 22 men that are running around very fast, you know, and their only goal is to get more goals into the net than the other team. Isn't that so? That's their win. If you think of your, your workplace, I know my husband works I don't know what he does really, but he works with, with numbers. That's all I know. And I guess his win will be to get a profit margin. I hear the word profit margin all the time. That would be it. That's what they're trying to get, a profit margin. I'm a physio, so my win would be that my patients get better. That's my win. But as a church, what is our win? I was so excited when Funke was on the stage and she said, 
children gave their hearts to Jesus. That is our win, church. That is our win. That's why we do what we do, to see the, the lost come to Jesus. And I pray that you will take that on your heart. That is my win for the month of May and going into June and for the rest of my life, Lord. My win in you will be to see my family come to you. My win will be to see my neighbors come to you. My win will be to see that all of the people that I know in my world are impacted through me and what I could do and what I could say and who I could be, that overflow, that should be our win. Now, what will it take? What will it take to do this? Firstly, I believe we need to change our mindset. You know, Nadine spoke very, very uh, prophetically even and, and so profoundly in, in week one about that childish behavior and childlike behavior. You see, when Rachel was, was born, and that's a long time, 20 years ago, and she was nearly, yeah, nearly 20 years ago born, her first words she started speaking were, me, my, I want. You see, we're all born with a selfish nature, isn't it? We all do. If your child comes and says, okay, mommy, you take it, that's not a normal child because generally, generally they will say, mine, it's mine, I want it. Unfortunately, as adults, we sometimes don't change, do we? We still become selfish in nature. And the Lord is calling us to change our mindset, to move from me, my family, and I to others. To others. It's going to change. It needs a change in mindset to move away. And N.K. mentioned that more of you, Lord, and less of us. That's where it needs to change. More of you and less of us. Because you see, there should be a change when we come to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and gave us this ministry of reconciliation. That God was re reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed us committed to us the message of reconciliation. Just, just echo those words. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though Christ, God was making his appeal through us. That is the heart of Jesus, yeah, to seek and save the lost. That is the heart when Jesus walked on this earth was to seek and save the lost. And the Lord is telling us, each one of us, that he wants to make this appeal through us. It's a mission, like Pastor Faith said at the start. It's a mission. Whether we accept this mission, it's up to us. Now the invitation, the power of the invitation. And I want you all to take, you should all have one of these. I hope you have one. You should have. Well, you will get one of these as well. But these are invitations. There are loads of invitations around uh, that you can grab from the Connect Point. But on this invitation, exactly on the 8th and 9th of June at Stewart Park from 2 p.m., my, many of you will not even read this invitation, but it's talking about extreme sports and wall and, and all of these things that are, that are going to happen and it might just take that we all, and might just mean that we all take at least a few invitations now john 1 verse 45 to 46 says philip found nathaniel and told him we have found the one moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote jesus of nazareth the son of joseph nazareth can anything good come from there nathaniel asked philip's words were Come and see. That's all he said. Come and see. Now this week I took a few of these invites. And you can get them from the connect point and we can hand them out. There's, there's loads of invites. I took this invite to work and I, you know, and I was speaking to one of the ladies at work. And, and we were just talking, a Penny, who I work with at reception. And I said, Penny, you've got to come and see this festival's going to be great. And I kind of like just read out what's going to happen. She's got grandkids. 
But all I did was say, come and see. That's what it takes. That's all it's going to take. We've got major, major events going on. Come and see. Now, all of you would have this, and I'd love for you to take it out. This is going to be powerful, right? Have you got it? Wave it up. Oh, you've all got it. Brilliant. The young people are doing a good job, right? Now, on this, Pray Unite Serve Chat, at the back, there are five names. And I know you are all very, very, very busy people, so I suggest we all take our pens and write out five people in our world that we actually are believing in faith that will come to Jesus during this festival tea side. Now, you might think, I don't know anyone. You live next to somebody, surely to goodness, right? Your neighbors, maybe you put neighbor one if you don't know their name yet, neighbor two or whatever, <laughs> or number 23 or 25, whatever it takes. I'm talking about faith here. I'm talking about a faith step. Now, as I kept talking, you keep writing there. And the thing is, at the end of the day, we can have all these thousands of pounds that have gone and invested into getting leaflets, into get flyers, into getting all of this promotion, into hiring Stewart Park, into, but it's going to take a personal invitation. We've seen this with Alpha. It needs a personal invitation where you actually take an invitation and actually say, come, come and see. Just come and see what this festival is about. It's going to be an exciting time. There's so many leading up events to the festival. The youth, you all are going to have a get together on the 5th. And the guys are going to meet together on the 6th to have a barbecue at Stewart Park. The women are going to meet together on the 7th. Woo! And you don't want to miss that because Pastor Kath has organized it, ladies. Oh, it's only for the ladies, by the way. But yeah, you don't want to miss that. But all of these things are leading up with those simple words of come and see. And ladies, we've got our invitations. Guys, I don't know what you're all doing. You all are just saying. But the girls have the invitations ready, yeah, with stories of hope. And this week, I've started inviting my friends and with the words, come and check it out. Come and see how you talk. I don't know. Come and see. Come and see those simple words of come and see. Now, we have the awesome opportunity of uh, listening to, Louis, uh, to uh, Andrew Palau, Louis Palau's son. And he spoke about how he was a typical American boy. He was like, didn't worry, didn't care about Jesus. He didn't want anything to do. Although his dad was an evangelist and he loved Jesus and their family was on, on fire for Jesus, he didn't want to know anything about it. And at the age of 27, they were having a similar, um, Louis Palau was preaching in Jamaica uh, with a similar festival. And he invites his son, Andrew, to come along. And because it's Jamaica, who's not going to go, right? With the nice weather and the beach and the sunshine or whatever. And so this Andrew Palau just goes just because his dad said we're going to Jamaica. And lo and behold, at an event like this, he gives his heart to Jesus. How powerful is that? Yeah, he gives his heart to Jesus, and now he's continuing to preach in these festivals, bringing thousands and thousands and thousands of people to Jesus. Can I just encourage you, keep this Pray this pray and pray of, be prayerful about this. Even as you go into your small groups this week, be prayerful about the people that you are going to invite to Festival Teesside. Because with those simple words, it will be come and see. Now, also as part of all of this that is going on, we have something so important, which is the evangelism training. And that's going to come up as well. And you can actually, uh, it's called Friendship Evangelism Training. You can actually scan the code right now if you can. Can I just encourage you that these people, the, this association has, um, you know, invested in bringing world international guys from, from even South Africa and other parts of the world to come and teach us about evangelism. Can I just encourage every single one of us in church to go on that training? Because it's not just going to be for Festival Teesside. It's going to be for life. 
We need to be empowered with this training. So the dates are the 13th, the 14th, which is local, but there's also, if you can't make those, there's also the rest of the week. But let's get, let's get trained up for this evangelism training. If you've not done it yet, I encourage you, if you're not doing it now on the screen, uh, as you do it now, do it in your connect groups. Ask questions at the connect point. I really, really encourage you. I encourage you to go on this training. Now, today, you know, I stand here in Destiny Church and I'm speaking to you and I'm in you know, we're in the church of God, and we've, I'm in a family of God, and I'm so grateful, and in the temple of God. And when I started to think about this, I thought, you know, if somebody didn't come and tell my dad to come and see what church is like, I could be in another temple. I could be in the Hindu temple worshiping other gods. And I started to think about that, you know, He's, my dad's, um, you would have heard the story, some of you, my dad's colleague, Patsy, came to him and said, Casey, come and see, come and see what church is about. And she did this over and over and over again, till one day he did give his heart to Jesus. And that went on to impact my mom. That went to impact my, four, my uh, three sisters, four of us, and now there's ten grandchildren. All of that impact... It went on to impact my dad and mom's family. Now hundreds know Jesus because of that one invite of come and see. Now this is how simple it's going to be for you and I to start doing our part. And you know when Andrew Palau was talking, I started to think of people that are close to us because his dad had it on his heart and uh, Louis Palau had it on his heart that he's going to take everything to get his son there. And I started to think of people that are close in your world, your husbands, your wives, your children that are yet to know Jesus. This could be it. The simple thing of come and see what it's about. I pray that there's something burning inside of you to think, you know what, something simple as come and see could be something that changes one life, but not just one life, but generations to come. I'm just going to bring this chair, and we use this chair often as the empty chair when we pray in our connect groups. And, and you need to start thinking about people that you will want to come and fill the chair. But, you know, as Christians, we can become so complacent. You know, sometimes, I've been in church a long time now, you can come into the church and you're like, somebody took my chair. You know, <laughs> we could be like that. We could be complacent as in, I'm enjoying what God has done for me. I'm enjoying the goodness of God. I am enjoying, but the Lord is saying to us that we need to move. We need to get up. Spiritually, we need to get out of that posture of complacency, out of that posture of selfishness, to think, you know what, it's not about me, but it's about others. It's going to take the thing of saying go. The Lord is saying to us, we need to go with the message of come and see. And if I've just got that slide, guys, with the starting point of go to come and see. But it starts, it all starts with the thing of follow me. And we need to just pause here, and it is a red light, as it were, follow me. Now, you might be here and you do not know Jesus and you've come and I'm going to pray for you just now. Follow me. But you know what? We can be Christians for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But do we really follow Jesus? I would love for us to think about that. You know, the Lord says we need to love him with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths. And he goes on to say, love your neighbor as yourself as well. And the Lord is speaking to me, and I pray he's speaking to you and saying to us, are we true followers of him? Because if we are, 
then we shouldn't be those people that are so complacent with life and just sitting. We should be those people that are seizing every opportunity to share the goodness of God. We should be those people like we, we saw last week when Nadine spoke with that water that's flowing through us. We should be those people that are oozing with love and compassion. We should be clothed with those things, with love, compassion, kindness. And the Lord is saying to us, are you my true followers today? And we are going to pray now. And I'd love for all of us to stand as we unite as a church. As we unite to say, Lord, what is it you are wanting me to do? What is it you are wanting me to do? But before I start there, I'm just going to ask anyone here that does not know Jesus. The starting point is following Jesus. Jesus, following him with every part of your life. And I'm just going to pray with you, and you can just echo this prayer with me. And at the end, after you've echoed this prayer, please see somebody, see somebody at the connect point and connect with us. But let's just pray, because that is our win, church. That is our win, when one comes to know Jesus. There's a party in heaven when one comes to know Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here amongst us. Thank you, Jesus. We just sense your presence right now. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray for those that do not know you. Let's just echo this prayer. Lord, I know that I have come short of your glory. I know, Lord, that I've sinned before you, Lord. And today, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you have come to save me. And today, Lord, I believe that you are, the, uh, you are the son of the living God. And today, I commit my life to you. I commit my life to you. And I say, come and have your way in me. Come and have your way. Like I said, if that was you today and you've received Jesus, I just pray that you would just see us at the end. And I for those of us that are here in this place right now, I just sense that the Lord is speaking to each one of us. And I'd love for us to just lift our arms up and say, Lord, I want more of you and less of me. I want to surrender my life to you. Lord, take away selfishness from me. Help me to share you to those around me. Lord, we just thank you. As a church, we come before you with hearts surrendered to you. We ask, Lord, that you come and refresh us with your Holy Spirit today. That we will not be living from a, a, a way of being selfish, but we will start becoming selfless in what you have called us to do. I pray through this week that we will go with that message of come and see, come and see. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will unction us from above to go, to be those people that go into all the world because you have equipped us to go. I pray, Lord, that even as we go through this week, help us to share our testimony, help us to share love, Help us to be, uh, to, re to refresh those that are struggling this week, Lord. Refresh those that need a refreshing from you. May our words be filled with life this week. May we be able to build people up in our words and our lifestyle and our actions this week, Lord. We want to be those people that are recognized as your followers, that love you you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. And out of the overflow of that comes, we will love our neighbors as ourselves. Teach us your ways, Lord. As a church in destiny, teach us your ways that we will follow you all the days of our lives. And today, Lord, if we are here and we've been selfish all this time, May today be a turning point. May today be a day of repentance where we come to you and say, Lord, I choose to follow you truly all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus.